and see it might fix itself. Nope. Flip her. Use the handle. Probably around. Up. That is that way. That's that way. Yeah. Hi everyone. How are you all tonight? Take a deep breath, I will, and calm down. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. I'm here. We're aware. Flossie's still sick. Sorry, Hannah's still sick. It's a dreadful head cold or hay fever or both. Something. It's not going well with her. But hasn't slowed her down, so she's managing okay. It's been such a hectic week this week. You have no idea the things that have gone wrong. If it could have gone wrong or backwards or upside down or roundabout this week, that's what's happened in this house. And it finished this morning with my toothbrush breaking. Of all things, <laughs> you can laugh, of all things, my toothbrush broke. Now, it's an electric toothbrush. It's an Oral-B electric toothbrush. And I will admit that I didn't pay for it. It was one I was given to try about 15 years ago. So it's had a good life. Um, oh, my gosh, I went to brush my teeth this morning and it was plugged in and I turned it on and I usually just wait a few minutes for it to charge up and no light and I was poking and cleaning it up and I thought, oh, I haven't cleaned it, so I cleaned it all. And no, it was dead, dead as a dodo. So there's me, you know, those little round heads on the electric toothbrushes and there, try, try and brush your teeth without it actually twirling. It took me like 10 minutes and I was no, no, I was not happy. So then I had to go toothbrush shopping. I managed to find one actually on half by sale. So I was very happy with that. So I now feel like I have clean teeth again. So that was the last thing that went wrong today. Oh no, Facebook was down. How many people did, um, did get stunned by Facebook being down? I actually didn't know until I heard it on the news about 8.30 this morning. For someone um, who doesn't like Facebook, you're very upset by that one. No, I wasn't because I didn't miss it at all. I, I think um, I was quite relieved because I had a fair bit of website work to do today. I don't normally work on Thursdays. It used to be, Thursday used to be my day with mum and I'd pick her up and we'd go shopping and I'd do a doctor's appointments, chemist, whatever she had to do. Then we'd have lunch and I'd take her home and put everything away. So I didn't work Thursdays, but of course now mum's in the nursing home. So I don't have that um, time with her necessarily, but I still stick to Thursdays, my running around, paying bills, going to the post office, picking up things, dropping things off, going to the op shop, that sort of day. Um, so it was a busy day, but I didn't get that done today either. So that would be carried over till tomorrow. Just all, it just, it's been a real mixed up mishmash of a couple of weeks, but never mind. I have a toothbrush and I'm very happy. Anyway, hello, Michelle. Hello, Diana. Hello, Eve. Maureen. Hi, Pamela. Um, Lynette. Who else is there? I can't see. But anyway, lots of people. So, guys, have you seen how many subscribers we've got now? Almost 900. Woo! So, remember, when we get to 1,000, we've got that... Um, that mystery prize draw and I can tell you it has been made even better because Meryl from Rainy Day Books has very kindly sent a gift voucher to be included with the prize. Woohoo! So that that was really unexpected and really, really nice. And if you're a book lover, remember to log in, and keep visiting so that you can be in the draw. Um, on that note, for everyone that watches the videos but can't get on to um, live chat, you just need to log into your YouTube account. If you don't have a YouTube account, it's as simple as creating one. Um, they actually don't call them accounts. They call them channels. You don't need, <laughs> don't know why. They call them channels. So you'll end up with your own YouTube channel, which isn't so bad then because you can um, create your playlist of your favourite videos and things. And, of course, Cheapskates will have its own playlist on your channel, won't it? We will feature proudly. A um, little bit of blatant advertising there. So.
So do remember to do that. And, or you can leave comments in the um, box below. And I read them after the show. And I try to answer every comment that I get. Sometimes I miss a few and I am a couple of days behind, but it will happen. Hi, Priya. Hi, Karen T. I haven't forgotten you, Karen T. I haven't. I got your message. I just need to have five minutes of sit down, actually have a conversation time with Wayne so I can ask him about your problem and get back to you. And again, we've been like ships passing in the night for since last Thursday. It's been hello, honey. Bye, honey. Hello, honey. I love you. Bye, honey. Good night. Good morning. Whatever. That's been us. So I will get to it. I haven't forgotten your, your question. Hi, Noella. Noella. And before Christine Hill. Hello, everyone. Oh, this is really nice to see you all here. So tonight I'm going to show you how to make my mother's famous fish cakes. And I, you might be thinking, everybody's mother's got a famous something. My mother's fish cakes are famous. She used to sell them, um, especially this time of year during Lent, hot off the presses. She would make fish cakes start Wednesday night to be delivered on Friday and she would make hundreds of the things. It was um, after my father died, it was one of the things she did was catering and so fish cakes during Lent went everywhere and she would sell them. We stood, my brother and I would stand and help her and we'd have an assembly line going and one would dunk in the flour and the egg and the crumbs and one would put them in the fry pan mum would do the mixing. And, you know, that's how she kept a roof over our heads and kept us at school and all sorts of things. So they are famous. She had people from all over Melbourne um, ordering her fish cakes, but they're so simple and so cheap and so easy that there is no excuse to not try them. Hannah loves them. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. She's eating Fruit Loops at the moment. Would you believe? Fruit Loops. You bought them. I did buy them. Um, this month's journal, actually, the April journal, I just made it live. Um, so after the show, you can go over to the website and log in and have a look at the journal. But there's a recipe there for something called leprechaun bait. It's St. Patrick's Day on, on Sunday. I had to do something for St. Patty's Day, really. And I think I usually do corned beef and cabbage or colcannon or something like that. Potatoes. This year, yeah, potatoes, some sort of potato dish. This year, we're doing the leprechaun bait. So, and I've included the recipe in the on the menu in the um, April Journal. Anyway, back to mum's fish cakes, a bowl. Why are they so cheap? because it only takes one tin of um, tuna. This is Aldi tuna in spring water, um, and it's the bigger one. I actually have two um, tins here because I'm doing a double recipe for us tonight. Um, I'm going to do it. I might as well bulk it up. And it uses leftover mashed potato. So Will the recipe be available? Yes, the recipe will be available, Christine. Don't worry about it. I'll I'll put a link in the box below and it'll be on the show notes page. So I've been saving mashed potato for a couple of days. And there it is. It's also, the recipe is also in the um, recipe file. It's just um, mashed potato from our dinners that I've kept a spoonful or so back. Popped it in the container in the fridge and that's it. Whoops, oh. I'm flicking it everywhere. I should have my apron on. So, whoops, there we go. Because I am a very messy cook. Anyone that's seen me cook in person knows. All right. That just flared the light then because it's white. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. All right. Mashed potato. Grated onion, which I did earlier. I whiz it in the food processor. It's easier. Um, some herbs. There we go. They, they're the um, mixed herbs. Some oregano. oregano, just a bit. 
that's about all I do. And then a beaten egg, and I will beat the egg, just a beaten egg to bind it. Um, really simple. Now, I do all this bit before I add the tuna. You could use salmon if you wanted to, but I tend to think salmon is too expensive to waste on fish cakes. Um, and my kids aren't fond of salmon. <laughs> But anyway, okay, so that's it. Now comes the fun part, and I remembered the gloves tonight. Because <laughs> you have to swoosh it all together and mix it all through. I've lost a finger. There we go. So it's easier to do with your hands. It really is. All sorts of wrist rolls and things are easier. They've got their diamonds on, so shouldn't have a problem. There we go. Ooh. All right, you ready? Can you see? No. If I move over here, you'll be able to see. There we go. Is that better? Yep, you can see what I'm doing. Squish it all through. Just smush it. Smush it all up. It's um, not a terribly um, heavy recipe. It's um, It will depend on your potato. Um, I tend to use the dry mashed potato before I've added any um, milk or water or butter to it. Take a bit out of the pot before I do that for this recipe. Just squish everything through like so. Then get your tuna. Now, I've already drained this, so in it will go. <laughs> Goes, break it up. I like it to be a bit clumpy so that you actually get some of the fish, not just the flakes, but the bits of clumpy in your fish cakes. Um, but it's up to you if you like it really fine, then flake it well. It doesn't really matter. Just remember, as I said, with the um, rice patties and the cream cheese patties, that try and keep them all a uniform size so that they will stick together. And then you're swooshing through again. Swooshing, swooshing, swooshing. It's really quite... No, it's nothing like Play-Doh floss. And I think it's like Play-Doh. No, nothing like Play-Doh. But just make sure it's well mixed through so that you've got fairly even spread of tuna or salmon to your potato. Now, get to the bottom. Get to the bottom, is it? I can't see. Am I getting to the bottom? Yeah. Cool. That's the beauty of a pirate's bowl. You can see. How am I going down there? Yeah. All right. Getting there. Getting there. Squishing it all up. Now, remember we made the um, shake and bake last week? Well, that's what I use to coat the fish cakes. Mum used to use cornflake crumbs. So back in the 1960s, 70s, whenever it was um, that they first came in, she used to buy them in boxes from the supermarket and then she just decided she'd smash, around, smash her own cornflakes. So she'd just buy cornflakes and um, crunch them up. Okay, so that's all done like that. I'm going to leave the gloves on for the next bit because it is messy too. Get rid of those. And here we go. Now, ideally, ideally, after this next step, you put them in the fridge for half an hour or so to chill. Now, I took everything out of the fridge um, just before we went live, so it's still quite cold. It's all quite cold. But chilling them helps the um, shake and bake or the crumbs to set and sit on the patties while they're cooking. Now, it depends how you like to make them. We like ours sort of large-ish, so they're probably a mandarin size. 
mandarin size and squashed into a patty shape into flour into an egg wash and this egg wash I've um, done with water egg and water and into the shake and bake okay now now I do need a plate so why not pop them over here on the toy board okay. oh, I could have too okay so that's all we do with them um, into the flour like so into the egg wash drip off a bit and into the shake and bake has anyone made the shake and bake and tried it Cream cheese patties, Christine. Um, if you go to show notes, there's a link in the show notes directly to the recipe, or it is in the recipe file. Um, if you go to the website and just type cream cheese patties into the search, they'll come up. Okay. Oh, shake and bake is same deal. Go to the show notes and it will be there for you. You can just either copy it or save it or download it, print it, do whatever you do. Okay. So that's them. Now, to cook them, I have my trusty fry pan over there with hmm, about half a centimetre of oil in the bottom. And the oil needs to be hot, really, really hot. Otherwise, your coating will just soak up the oil and it won't crisp up. So you want the oil really hot and you do them in small batches right, so that the oil maintains temperature. Okay, so that's four. Let me get rid. Oops, sorry, darling of this and I'll light the gas for the now when that oil gets hot enough it'll start to bubble and fizz and whatever and I'll put the patties in then okay how many fish cakes do we roughly get from one tin of tuna from one tin of tuna if you make them about the size I just did, you'll get eight to ten. It depends on how much potato you put in. The recipe says two cups of mashed potato. I never do two cups of mashed potato. Again, adapt it to suit yourself. More mashed potato, they'll go further, obviously. Um, you'll have less um, fish in the fish cakes but you'll feed more people. So eight to 10, or if you make them small and dainty and, you know, petite, I'd be hungry boys. They wouldn't eat anything small and dainty, would just disappear. You'd probably get, um, I get, you know, 13 to 15, depending. So a double batch does me, get, I get about two dozen, maybe 26, 24 to 26 out of a double batch. Um, using that much potato. So that was my little container, which is a, it's a lock and lock, but it's a mm, two litre, two and a half litre. Sorry, I couldn't see on the bottom. That was a good look for me, wasn't it? Two and a half litre container um, that was almost full of mashed potato, but it wasn't pressed down or anything. It was just plopped in there. So, all right. How's the oil going? Could you add... Um, vegetables to it like peas, corn, carrot, grain, zucchini. If you wanted to, but again, make sure they're all a uniform size so that they stick together and nothing right. Okay, so that's nice and hot. I'm going to turn that down just a smidge because we don't want it to burn. Um, Grab myself a plate and 
and I will. Now they don't take long to cook either because you just want to brown them and warm them through. Okay. Here's Now, once they've got a bit of a crust on the bottom, I just sort of gently pat them down a bit, like so, and watch them. And watch them because they do burn um, and they do brown quite quickly. All of this out of my way over here. Oh, I did make a mess, didn't I? I am a very messy cook. Maureen and Ron, I have made the shake and bake, and Ron has also made the fish cakes, and she says they're both excellent. Cool. Love that. Yeah. I um, coated some chicken last night with, um, we had a bit of a meal plan swap around, and so we had chicken schnitzels last night. So I used um, the KFC mix and it was simply um, into plain flour, into the egg wash, into the KFC mix, into an egg wash and into breadcrumbs, triple coated. Oh, goodness, they were good, weren't they? They were so good. Um, now, I only did the triple coating because the breadcrumb container was full and I had more bread crusts ready to be made into crumbs. So I had some to use up. I'm just flipping these little patties. You do need to be a bit careful with the flipping because they're quite soft and fragile being just mashed potato. Um, but they're really good. I'll give you a little plate. You can try one. You can go, mm -hmm, how good they are. Oh, no. no, you won't die. No. No, no. Um, how many for one tin of tuna? Yeah. I mean, it will depend on your mashed potatoes. So the recipe says two cups of mashed potato, add a bit more. And I actually don't measure the mashed potato because it's just eyeball it, seriously. Who's going to measure two cups of mashed potato for something like this? This, this, is, this is one of those quick and easy, passed down through the generations type recipes that you can eyeball. It's not baking, it's not a sponge cake or something like that that is actually a precise science and you really need to stick to the recipe. So do whatever you like with it. Yeah, Bonner, yes. Shake and bake is um, good for um, coating um, Cream cheese patties, it's good for coating the, um, if you want to, the rice patties. Um, I make um, nutmeg croquettes and I use a shake and bake for those, which is really good. Um, it's also really good. This is a great time of year to be buying eggplant. It's quite cheap at the moment. If you get the bigger eggplants and slice them so they're about a centimetre thick, um, and pat them dry and then into flour, into the egg wash, into the shake and bake and just fry them. <gasps> Yum. They are so good. Um, and look, if you're serving eggplant like that, you don't need to serve. Um, you can serve it with other vegetables. You don't need to serve it with meat or chicken or fish. Just make the eggplant the... Um, protein, the meat part of the meal, for instance, or do eggplant parmesan, same thing. Just put a tomato sauce on it. Okay, so these have browned up really nicely. So, and they're hot. Now, if you don't want to fry them, because they're coated in the shake and bake, they will obviously bake in the oven um, so you dip them in the flour the egg wash the shake and bake pop them onto a baking sheet 
I always line my baking sheets with um, baking paper and put them into a 200 degree oven for about 10 minutes, flip them over and about another 200 degrees, 10 minutes or so, and just check them to make sure that the coating is, they're good. Can you have the mayo? You have the mayo, oh my goodness. The mayo or the garlic there, are we? Yeah. Mayo, there you go. Thank you. Talk about spoiled. Um, they're nice with lemon too. Do they freeze more? Oh yes, Maureen, they do, and they thaw well too. <laughs> yeah, they're really good for, um, batch making now who was um outback six on tuesday night was saying you know they both work full time they have four children she comes home from work she's really tired getting dinner on the table is a pain batch cooking and i mentioned the spag bowl and i do it in four enough for four meals in, in while i'm cooking it so batch cooking i'm doing a double recipe of fish cakes which will probably be three meals for us um, to go into the freezer um, we'll eat some and I'll freeze the rest and when I freeze them I use my cereal liners save the cereal liners out of the wheat mix and ricey packets and um, they come apart really easily on the seam I'll just turn that off come apart really easily on the seam and then I just wipe them down peg them up to dry and cut them into hmm, probably about um, I don't know, four inch squares, something like that, 10 centimetre, 10, 15 centimetre squares, depending on what I want to separate and use that as freezer film. And they work really well. And they work well for sausages too. If you want to freeze sausages and be able to pull out one or two, as sometimes you just need a couple. So I lay the sheet out. I start with one sausage, roll it over, put another one in, roll it over, put another one in, roll and just roll them up. So they're like a giant um, roll, spring roll, Swiss roll, is what I'm trying to say. And put them into a freezer bag and freeze them that way. And then if I only need one or two or four or whatever, I can just take them out individually. I don't have to thaw the whole lot of the sausages. So that works really well. Um, yeah, I haven't tried it with zucchini because zucchini is a little bit more of a water vegetable than the eggplant is, but I think it would work really well. And I know zucchini um, takes um, the crumbs beautifully, so um, try that. It's really good. I will put those away because that's my job to do later before I go to bed. Finish off the fish cakes. Let me just grab... If you can have to cover it up. Sorry, folks, I'm disappearing out of you again. I just don't want to. Um, I just don't want to. There we go. Stove's off. Oh, I don't come in. Oh, you can just sit there. There we go. Um, stove's off. So, fish cakes. Thought they'd be really nice to do quickly tonight. Um, tomorrow's Friday. If, if you have fish on Fridays, that might be a... Fish cakes might be a um, taste of change for you. When we have them, I usually do coleslaw and wedges with our fish cakes. And I make the wedges myself. And they're, they're, why would you buy them? They're so easy. And that's simply cutting potatoes into wedges. And if you can get the bigger potatoes, that works really well. And then I um, pat them down so they're dry. And I use some olive oil and some paprika and some pepper, mix the olive oil and the spices together and drizzle that over the potato and swoosh it all through with my fingers again. And then this is the funny bit, it's the OCD bit, um, get my baking paper on my sheet and I do actually lay them out in single rows so that they're not all clumped up, but they're easier to turn if I do that and into a very hot oven, so into about a 220 to 230 degree oven, depending on whether it's fan forced or not, and 15 minutes, turn them another 15 minutes, perfect, perfect wedges. And with potatoes being reasonably cheap at the moment, you could do a kilo of wedges for around 60 cents as opposed to $3 from the supermarket. So... They're, they're 
worth doing at home and they're nicer at home you can change up the seasonings you can add garlic to them you could add whatever could you coat them and shake them back the wedges yeah yeah they'd be like those um beer batter type ones yeah Sh shake coat them in shake and bake yep you could and bake them off mm. you could do all sorts of things to shake and bake so uh, you should have i wish you could have seen her because she's got it's like pick me pick me she put her hand up in the air isn't that cute oh you're such a precious thing <laughs> okay Ah, oh, fried zucchini. Cool. You'll have to teach me how, Pamela. I suppose I'd know how, couldn't I? I could figure that out, couldn't I? Can't be that difficult, surely. Fried zucchini. Do you cut them long ways? Um, in and are they thick or thin? Sorry, too many questions for you. Um so yeah. There's my mother's. That's my mother's famous fish cakes now if you want to make a little um dipping sauce to go with them i use craft coleslaw dressing and a little chopped onion and a little sprinkle of um chives mix it all up put it in a little bowl and that's the dipping sauce that goes with them and it's really nice now I've tried it with other dressings and mayonnaises and they just don't have the same flavour that the Kraft coleslaw dressing has, although the Zouche is often cheaper than the Kraft and it's pretty darn close. So I've been happy if I can get the Zouche on sale for about $2 in the big bottles, I will buy it and stock up. And it's almost as good as the Kraft. So... Cool, thanks Pamela. Medium zucchini cut in half, crumbed and fried. Yum, yeah, cool. Okay, and zucchini are quite cheap at the moment too if you don't have them growing in your garden. So, um, oh, I've got so much to try. Sorry, I keep looking down, I don't mean to. I have so much to try now. This is really cool. I love this, sharing, um, the sharing of information so that we all get something out of this is really neat because that said before you know cooking dinner every night is not my favorite thing to do it's um a bit of a chore to me which is why i have the meal plan so i don't have to think about it but i love to try new things i just like you know something different and i did decide earlier this year one of my new year's resolutions was to try one new recipe a month so so far so good we've worked on them and we've tried a couple of new ones and we've liked them so they will become keepers i'll put them into my recipe book but um one new recipe a month works for me i can manage one new recipe a month i look for recipes that use ingredients that we eat normally anyway so they don't add to the grocery bill too um, okay yes yeah, salting the eggplant is a an old trick to salt it and let it sit for a while and then rinse it and pat it dry you usually let it sit for about 20 minutes half an hour which is more than enough time to do it and depending, I've not done it with zucchini, but I have with eggplant. Depending on the eggplant, you can actually get, if you put the colander over a bowl, you'll see there's quite a lot of moisture that does come out of them. I don't normally bother. It used to be done to bring the bitterness out. But I don't find eggplant particularly bitter. Maybe that's just me. But I think it's the way you cook it and the way what you have with it that makes the difference. One of our favourite um, winter things is focaccia and I make um, the filling from diced eggplant, diced onion, diced zucchini, sliced celery mushrooms. and mushrooms and tin tomatoes, diced tin tomatoes. And I just let it all and some garlic, a um, couple of cloves of garlic that crushed into it and I just put it in my little pot um, I have a smaller pan than this. I don't know what it's called. The smaller pan than this. Um, well, that's the frying pan. They've all got names. 
um, and I just put it in that, put the lid on it, and over a low heat, I just let it cook. And it cooks down because those veggies, being the water veggies, do cook down, you know, to almost mush. But it just becomes so flavorful and oh, it's just delicious. And we have that on focaccias um, with um, sliced mozzarella over the top, and then I put it in the oven and let it all go gooey and melt. Delicious. And a half, half of focaccia with that filling on the top is a meal in itself. You don't need anything else to go with it. So we often have that for weekends in winter. So thank you, Pamela. Skillet, there you go. Do you know, totally off topic again, I need a new wok. Now, I've had my wok for about 12 years, and it was a very expensive wok that I got from the discount cookware shop in Croydon and it was Anilon or it is Anilon and it's lasted and lasted and lasted but just the last couple of months the coating has started to peel so I'm not confident using it anymore so it just sits in the cupboard. So I got a thing that cookware brands were having a sale and I went to look and I just typed in wok and I was getting all sorts of weird things coming up. So then I had to go to um, something skillet woks or wok skillets or something like that to actually find what I wanted. What's the deal with changing the name of things? A wok is a wok. It's just a big round steel pot with the deep sides and a narrow bottom and handle so you can well. Anyway, so I'll be looking for a new wok eventually. Something else. I told you this week it's just been crazy with things going kaflumpy all over the place. There we go. So does anyone have any questions? No? Yes? No? Type them in. If you've got a question, type it in capitals so that we know it's a question and we can answer it if we can. That would be really good. Um, I was going to say something else. It's gone out of my head. What were we talking about, Floss? We were talking in the car about what we are going to do. The leprechaun mix. Oh, yeah, I've mentioned the leprechaun mix, leprechaun bait yeah. um, for St. Patrick's Day. And we've got the Grand Prix on in Melbourne this weekend, so maybe car racing on Sunday afternoon with leprechaun bait might be the way to go. We'll sit down and um, A new blog post when I get round to a prayer. I, I have quite a few listed, but my personal blog at the moment is sort of on hold because I've got so much else going on and I something's got to give and that was the thing that had to give. But I do, I, I will keep it going. I won't shut it down. So isn't Bessemer, Eve said she's had her Bessemer walk for 14 years. My mum had Bessemer pots and pans. Oh, my goodness, they were amazing. She had a, um, it wasn't a wok, it was a, mm, just like a big casserole dish, cast casserole dish, but she could use it in the oven, she could use it on the stove. It was brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so no more questions? Not no. no more questions? I'm working on the price book notes for Tuesday night and I will be next Tuesday talking about price books and how to set one up, why you set one up, how to use it, if it's really worth the effort, yes, it really is, um, so that if you haven't done it before, you'll have the basics and then you can decide whether it's for you or not. And I know, and I was guilty of this too, thinking, oh, I'll remember that price, I'll remember that price, I'll remember that price. No, I didn't. So I'd um, love to be able to show you my original price book, but unfortunately I did a segment with a current affair a couple of years ago and it got lost. I had that original price book from back before Hannah was born. And it kept, it had all the prices, it had all the, and at that stage I was shopping at Jewel. Do you all remember Jewel Food Barns? Shopping at Jewel, so it had all the prices and I had them listed for everything, everything that we bought. 
and it just got lost during the filming of that segment and I I was heartbroken absolutely heartbroken about that book more because it was um, a bit of family history that I would have passed on to Hannah or one of the boys but anyway yes my um, my big saute pan the lid on that I made sure fits um, this frying pan and my um, wok actually fits the wok too so that works really well don't struggle with it Rosalie it, don't overcomplicate it I'll, I'll explain it all on Tuesday but seriously it's one of those things that you just do you don't think about it you just do it don't overcomplicate it and it's a bit like people with their budgets when they're first setting up a budget and they want to get it down to the nitty-gritty down to the nth degree the very last cent and it's overwhelming so keep it simple and you'll get the hang of it and then you'll just be able to work it and tweak it so that it suits you how you shop where you shop what you buy your budget you'll love it you will absolutely love it um, I do it the old-fashioned way with pen and paper. I know people that say they prefer to use their phones. My fat arthritic fingers don't work too well on my phone. So that doesn't work for me. And also phones get lost. They blow up. They get all sorts of things go wrong with them. So it's not always the most secure way to save something. You can do it on um, a spreadsheet. If you want to and store it on your um, tablet or in the cloud so that you can then access it with your phone isn't a bad idea. If you're savvy with spreadsheets, that would work for you too. But anyway. There's an app. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Pardon? I don't trust technology. <laughs> there you go. Coming from my 23-year-old, she doesn't trust technology has its place yeah yeah but it's not that reliable as we found today when um facebook and whatever else went oh instagram went kaflui and stopped working and i had i got the giggles because i was listening to them talking to people about how their facebook um downtime was affecting them and one one youngish woman she's probably from i don't know the 30s i suppose or close to 30 Oh, she was really stressed because she talked to her parents constantly all day on Facebook to check on them. She didn't know what she was going to do. And the guy just did say to her, well, why don't you ring them? And she was just, oh, no, no. She said, I don't want to talk to them. That's why I live eight hours away. So she communicates via Facebook only. Hey, there you go. I sort of got the giggles. I thought it was a bit sad. But then I got the giggles again. I thought, it's the way of the world, isn't it? We don't know how to talk face to face. Here I am talking to all you people in my kitchen, but you're all in your lounge rooms or kitchens or wherever. And we're not talking face to face. Never mind. All right then, folks. If there's no more questions, no one wants to know anything, I'll let you go. I'll clean up my mess, finish cooking the fish cakes. Um, Remember, I will put the links in the show notes and I'll drop them into the box below. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. So go over there and underneath there's a thumb. Make it a thumbs up for us. But I really appreciate that feedback. Um, you have no idea how I really appreciate that feedback. And um, by all means, share away. Spread the message that living a cheapskate's way isn't living with deprivation and it's not living. Thank you. And it's not living cheap. You know, we do what we have to do um, with what we've got and we stretch it and twist it to make it work for us. So, all right. Yes, Maureen, I will see you soon. Bye, okay. Emma Jane. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I've talk to myself horse again but I actually have really enjoyed it I hope you have too I'll put the links to the recipes as I said on the show notes and down below and I will see you on Tuesday bye